All right, welcome back to the Super Coach Enough channel. In this video, uh, we would normally be doing the Game Week 7 review. However, we still have uh, the Luton and Burnley catch up match from uh, round one to uh, catch up with. Uh, so, as you can see, currently sitting on 43 points, slightly below average, which is a bit flat. Um, and we've only really got uh, Morrison Kabore playing, which, you know, I imagine a few other teams would have. So um, we'll probably review that fully in the Game Week 8 preview coming up. But as I uh, teased in the video last week, uh, the Game Week 7 preview, um, pretty much as soon as lockout was lifted, uh, I was going to hit the button on the wild card and get it going. So uh, true to my word, I have done that. And I thought we could go through the uh, transferred team now. So you'll notice that I've used up a fair bit of the cash that I had. Um, and that's because we've tried to go pretty hard uh, in the the, uh, the midfield area. So uh, you can see the first change is in goalkeeper. So we've brought Areola in at 4.2 million. You know, uh, just basically two starting keepers for 8.2 million. Um, you know, pretty comfortable with that. Uh, our back line, so we, we already had Matty Cash, Estupanan, Kabore. So the trade-ins or the trade-outs uh, was Chilwell and uh, Baldock, who's obviously injured and not much used to us. Uh, and we've brought in Adogi and Botman. However, Botman uh, picked up a bit of a knee injury, is a chance of missing time. So that may change again. Um, you know, however, he is sort of the player that we want. We could maybe sideways to Anderson. Um, you know, obviously Trippier is a popular option. Um, he has had two big weeks and has jumped up in price. But, uh, you know, because we're spending so much money elsewhere, we can't really afford uh, the, the big hitters in defence. And, you know, I think it'll, it will balance out, you know, the extra points that we're going to get across the midfield and in forwards. Um, you know, we probably don't need to worry about the defence too much. We're going for value there. Um, so the big change, obviously, is in the midfield. Um, so Madison and Mbwemo have uh, survived the cut. I know a few people are getting off Mbwemo after a few blanks, but, you know, he'll come around uh, and could end up being a bit of a differential. So obviously we had Diaby at about the same price. Um and yeah, we've, we've cut him and, and stuck fat with him, Buemo. We'll see how that goes. But the two big hitters, Salah and Son, both in. You know, Salah, this was the first game week he blanked, so obviously we didn't get that score, which is fine. But uh, you can see in a game where they've had 11 players for the whole time um, and not been disallowed goals because of VAR, <laughs> not salty at all. But, uh, you know, they've been winning and he's been producing. So not worried about Salah in the slightest. Son, you know, he's looking really good since that sort of tweak, putting him as a focal point of the attack. You know, we can. I think we can expect more goals, more assists, all the good stuff. So brought those, those guys in. Obviously, to make that happen, did have to make a downgrade. And my target was going to be Anthony Gordon from Newcastle. Uh, only went and got himself uh, his fifth yellow card, so he's going to miss the next game. Um, but in saying that, uh, you know, if we look at the, the players around that price point, I think he is the one with the most upside, given that he does seem to be an important part of that Newcastle attack. Um, and also, once you look past next week's fixture, they've still got a couple of good ones coming up. Arsenal might be a bit of a banana peel, but outside of that, you know, blues and greys for a good amount of time. So, you know, I, I think the midfield is, is definitely strengthened, you know. Saka, Fernandez are doing okay. Obviously, you can see Saka is the highest scoring midfielder at the moment. Um, but, you know, someone had to go, and so oh, Saka was the one that made way to, to bring in Salah. Uh, and then in the forwards, I've stuck solo with Morris, um, Alvarez, and Haaland. I guess there there might be a bit of a case for uh, you know downgrading, upgrading, 
So the upgrade target would be Ollie Watkins, you know, at 8 million at 54 points, he's doing pretty well. Um, but then that obviously only leads us with 5.1. So as far as super cheap options go, the one I would lean towards is Archer from Sheffield United. But the idea of picking a Sheffield United attacker isn't ideal at the moment. So, you know, it's much of a muchness, I think, between these guys. So for now, we'll just stick solid with Morris and Alvarez. Obviously, if we sell Alvarez, we will lose some value because uh, he's currently priced at 7 mil. We got him in at 6.5 or 6.6. .6. So we've got him at 6.8 if we sell him. Um, so yeah, we could potentially lose some value bringing him out and back in. So we'd have to be pretty sure about that trade out. Um, to trade in Ollie Watkins. Um, I guess the, the only other consideration, which I don't think really is a consideration, but I've seen some people getting out of Haaland. It might be to fund, you know, the super mega midfield with Saka. Uh, if we go back to midfield, you know, you could get out of Haaland. Um, so for Ollie Watkins, but I guess I'm just... Him. So, you know, have Saka, have Fernandez, and then yeah, you've still got heaps of money for uh, Watkins, and you could even upgrade Morris and, you know, do it that way. But, you know, we're not getting rid of Harlan. That's that's pretty ridiculous. We know what he, what he can bring. I'm just going to reset to back to where it was. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's the wild card and the way the thing the way the team stands. Um, as I said, I'll do a little bit more research on Botman in particular. Um, but I think, you know, Gordon will probably sit out for just the one week and then, you know, I can get rid of Morris and, and play the five in the midfield uh, at that time. You know, and even with Botman, if he is going to miss a game or two, you know, I'm really only going to play three at the back at any one time. It's really just having that rotation option given they're all so cheap. But uh, yeah, so I thought I'd just uh, get on, uh, leave the, the people in suspense for not much longer. Um, but yeah, we'll do the game week review as per usual around Friday. Um, I'll do a bit of a final review of the team for uh, game week seven and how that went as well. At that time, obviously, updates on the Newcastle guys and how the team will shape up. And yeah, so other than that, we'll wrap the video up there. Uh, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below, any thoughts on the team, any questions about your team, any inside information you might have about some of these picks that I've added, you might have uh, completely gone the wrong way, happy to, to get all that info as well and feedback. Uh, if you're enjoying the content, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel for all the, the summer fantasy content I suppose we could call it, uh, but other than that, I'll catch you in the next one.